today is really an experiment in whether we can find new ways to all understand one another. Rebel wisdom is an evolving conversation. The main topics of it are the challenge of sense making, the, the, the sense that our sense making institutions are breaking down at an ever increasing rate, this sense that there are a lot of neglected perspectives and ideas, and also the, that, that a lot of the way that we've run society is breaking down, and these, I, we need to find new ideas from somewhere. This is something that I think is being increasingly obvious to all of us that something about society is, is off and being increasingly recognised that it's off. And the only way out is to, to, to bring in some new ideas, some of, new, some of the ideas that have been sort of on the fringes of the culture and have never been part of the culture. Um, and I'm, we're very lucky that some of the, 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 speakers are, are bringing, the speakers we have here are bringing some of those perspectives. We're poised in a way for catastrophe or transformation. And I think that is becoming more and more clear, and I think a lot of people are intuiting that. And there's very different ways that, that, that that's showing up, and there's different narratives about how that's showing up. But I think we all sense that something's shifting. An old way is coming to an end, and something new could be born. As a journalist, I'm very familiar and driven by this idea of speaking truth to power. In the social media age, a lot of this power is kind of distributed. It's... It's social shaming, it's the power of the mob, it's the power of not being able to, to say certain things. How do we think in public if every time we sort of don't express ourselves perfectly or we don't give enough context that we're attacked and we kind of learn not to say certain things? So this, there, there is something that needs to happen with this kind of increased polarisation, especially driven by social media, that we need to create spaces to have these conversations that we feel that we're not able to express and to make mistakes and to say things wrong and to be challenged and to to not feel that that is going to be potentially career-ending. There is a what, the ideas that we need to talk about, for sure. There's a definite what to be described, but the how is as important. The how is why we're here, is this event. It's not enough to come at these problems intellectually. It just doesn't work. We need to come at it with an understanding of that physiology. And so... There's a few useful models. One is polyvagal theory, which talks about the vagus nerve and its role in uh, our nervous system's role in effectively putting us into either a defensive mode where we feel under threat and we shut down, we start thinking differently, we're less open to new ideas, and we're, we're really defending ourselves. And that, that, you know, we can see that when we fall into an ideological position or a really fixed position. It's like, no, I'm not budging. It's not safe to budge. So we need to understand how we can, let's say, hack our bodies and come into a more relaxed exploratory mode. And that's why we're also going to be using some techniques today to help us get into that mode, help us relax, help us uh, activate our parasympathetic nervous system, which is the kind of rest and digest. It's the opposite of the sympathetic nervous system, where we're feeling in fight or flight or freeze. And... We know that from that space, from the fight or flight, we can't have a productive generative conversation. It just doesn't work. We have to get into a space of relaxation and curiosity. It's also another really key term. We're not entirely sure in that space what the answer is. I'd just like to ask you each to, to talk for a couple of minutes about what you want to achieve. It's a little hard to put my finger on, but I do think based on what I've seen over the last two years, that there is some sort of a reorganization of alliances. There's an awakening happening and a, uh, a change in allegiances where people are realizing that those that have traditionally been their allies may not be natural allies and that people that they have viewed with suspicion may be closer to them than they had expected. The problem is, in order for those alliances to function, you have to learn how people on the other side of them actually think. And this is very perilous. The remedy involves us talking to each other enough that we begin to understand what the other person's cognitive model is. And I see the hope for bootstrapping our way out of the predicament that we humans are in. That hope arises from our hearing each other enough to develop a shared model that will allow us to say, provocative things that are true, and then act on the basis of them. 
we all could use more humanizing of each other. We are, we are all someone's deplorables, probably, <laughs> right? If you describe any brief, brief ideology to which we appear to subscribe. And um, I think the greatest failures in communication happen when we have allowed those ideas about each other to get in the way of actually remembering that every single person that we interact with is just as human and sometimes brave and sometimes scared and sometimes certain and sometimes quite uncertain as the being that you are in your own head. Every single one of us. And what I have seen as the biggest failures of communication, of empathy, you know, when, when, when mob rule came to our campus, uh, it was clear that there was dehumanizing that happened first. So the more conversations we can have uh, in which we look people in the eyes and learn, learn the human on the other side, the more likely we are to be able to take that out into the world and not view anyone, no matter what their views may be, as a caricature. First would be a hope that we can, each of us, be supported in discovering more deeply and be brought into uh, more insight into that aspect of the, the larger story that is ours specifically to hold um, and to be uh, renewed in our hope in the context of that larger story. And then perhaps as the day evolves, perhaps feeling a sense of there being an insight that is larger than ourselves, that is also present. I would like to see people go away feeling a little more confident in being able to um, uh, cause ripples a little. I think it's extraordinary that um, when I was growing up, and I'm much older than anybody else here, um, in the 50s and 60s, it seemed to me that we were entering an era in which there was enormous freedom, and indeed there was. Um, and it's rather paradoxical that we now find ourselves in one of the more constrained uh, intellectual environments. I never saw this coming. Um, and I, I think that uh, being able to take um, an unpopular position should be something we can all do without fear of being um, uh, dehumanized. I think there's nothing that cannot be said. Um, it's the way in which it's said. So I don't think we should censor content. I think we should censor manner. And I think that everything can be said as long as people say it in a respectful way. And um, one of my very strong beliefs is competition is certainly part of the history of all life. But equally important, or I would say more important, is collaboration. And that actually all life is a matter of collaboration. Your body is a lot of bacteria that decided altruistically to get together and serve a common purpose. Everything that is living does so because it collaborates. And I would like us to be able to collaborate on things that are true and beautiful. And if we do that, we actually might get ourselves out of the hole we dug ourselves into. It's important to get people into smaller groups because we have 150 people here attending the summit. And in a group of that size, it's really difficult to create that level of intimacy and connection and understanding that you get in a smaller group of, say, 10 where we can really get a sense of, even in a day, we can get a sense of the other people in the group, we can get a sense of what they're bringing, who they are, and we build a certain trust, and a word we use is coherence. We're, we're in a little bit more of a coherence with one another. I understand what you're saying, you understand what I'm saying. You might not agree with me, but at least we're meeting each other as human beings. So, so on one level it's around intimacy, and the other level it's around, it's much easier to have a conversation the smaller the group gets. As Ali said, we spent the morning building, building up to what we're going to do now. We sort of got to know each other a little bit in our small groups and made some connections. And that's to, to build up the, the safety and the connection to do what we're going to do now. And we talked about before about sort of feeling, how feeling stifled around certain topics and certain things that we're allowed to express and we're not allowed to express certainly kind of made much worse by the kind of low bandwidth of social media is a, real, is a real issue. That thinking in public has become very dangerous because things can be taken out of context. 
And for that reason, we are going to turn the cameras off now. We shut off the cameras in the main room uh, because the invitation to the speakers and to everyone else was to have a conversation around things we don't feel comfortable talking about in public. Um, and that felt much easier to do with the cameras off. So right now, that's exactly what everyone's doing here. Um, the speakers modeled that uh, up on stage and they uh, discussed a variety of topics that aren't really, um, we're not able to discuss easily in public, um, either through social pressure or because they're quite complex, but, but mainly because we've, we're stifled in some sense by a mob mentality that we're afraid to activate. In order to really kind of reach truth with one another, we have to kind of take that risk to not really have a fully formed idea, to not quite know the, you know, have a sense of something but not quite there, and also to be able to keep a balance in ourselves of monitoring our own responses and reactions so that we can be calm, we can listen properly, even if we're talking about or listening to a really challenging idea that, that might be so uh, different to what we think. Topics, the speakers were, uh, you know, they got into some heavy territory, which was great, and a lot to reflect on. And I'm, I'm motivated, you know, without that sense of uh, panic, so it's that, that healthy sense of urgency leaving this uh, session today. It's been great for giving people a real sense of uh, community and, and hope. Figuring out how to talk to each other with generosity and enough precision to convey something important is one of the bigger questions of our age. We nominally share a language, but because of the way we live, that language is a blunt instrument. And so events like this that cause people to look at how they are communicating, what it is that they convey, and in what way they might reach across unbridgeable gaps more effectively, uh, these are perhaps the key to us bootstrapping our way out of the, the rather serious situation we find ourselves in. People who are conscious of the fact that the interior is as important as the exterior, in fact, more important right now, are, well, they're not entirely rare, but finding people who are conscious of that fact and are also competently and effectively putting it together with the exterior and the intellect um, is rare. And as far as I can tell, very important. There's no way that we're going to be able to do the things we need to do through using the forms of communication technique and the forms of mind that we currently have. And so we have to have some kind of shift. Um, and so being able to be mindful of that work and have some skillfulness in that, and then experimentally trying to figure out how to actually deploy it in contexts that give rise to increasing levels of individual depth and insight is um, kind of a fundamentally new thing and is vastly more helpful than all the various kinds of conversation that happen in just kind of the superficial intellectual layer.